What's up guys, welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. Well, I might be here with the best garage golf simulator setup ever. This is the G-Track retractable motorized golf simulator screen. I have people all of the time asking me, how can I build a golf simulator in my garage but still park my car inside or use it for other things? Well, when you have a motorized retractable screen that actually installs on your existing garage track rails without any modifications or anything, that's how you can do it. And that's why I want to show you guys this setup. So it is kind of temporary because I just wanted to show this in the channel for all those of you that have been asking about it. So I'm gonna do a full walk around. I'll show you guys some things that I might have done maybe a little bit differently. And I'll, I'll explain some different things that I actually didn't install just because it's a temporary setup. But I think you're gonna be really impressed. I mean, low bounce back, quiet screen. And I'll kind of give you a rundown of what I did here. So I took the shop indoor golf SIG 10 setup items that I had, the turf, the hitting mat, the BenQ LH820 ST that I already had installed, flipped that around. So it was a really fast, simple setup. Now, Shop Indoor Golf does sell this individually and then as well as packages. I do have discount codes and stuff for those guys, links that help support the channel, pinned to the top of the comments and put in the description. So make sure you check those out. But I'll tell you what, First thing first, let's just take a look at the time lapse of how I assembled this unit, and then we'll do everything from retract it, and then we'll also hit shots. So let's go ahead and take a look at the time lapse. All right, guys, first thing is I laid out all my items, pulled up my manual, and connected the poles on the end of the centerpiece. Then you connect the brackets. That allows you to then take the pole, put it up on your garage door rails. I do recommend two people doing this for safety reasons. After you do that, you'll be able to get your screen and then you'll connect that using zip ties, which is pretty simple to do. Then I'll grab the surround netting and the padding up on the rail, get that all set up with the ropes that are included, the suction cups down on the floor, laid out my hitting mat, got my projector turned around, and then before you know it, I was hitting my first shot. It was really that easy. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. Now let's just do a quick rundown of these components so everyone understands what I used. This is the four by 10 SIG Pro setup. So this is their matte setup with the SIG Pro Softy insert. These are those foam, like kind of a foam pad that is kind of snapped together with the SIG Pro Softy replaceable insert in the middle. I've shown all this in the channel before individually, so you guys can check that out. Um, just wanted to show you how that was set up. And then I have the Foresight Sports GC3 connected to a laptop off to the side. And then as far as projector goes, very temporary. BenQ LH820ST with a board ran across the rails. I mean, I wouldn't even recommend doing this really. It's just a temporary setup I did. You could use a floor mount projector or a cart off to the side. And I really think you're gonna be happy with that because you know, this is a temporary setup for yourself. You can just retract this anytime you want or bring it down. So you can get the projector out of the way. That's the whole point, right? So down here, they basically have a metal rod inside of here. This flap just kind of keeps everything, you know, forward. And then I'll show you guys how this is optioned off to the side. So there's multiple ways you can do this. It includes these metal kind of plates that you can screw into the ground and then you can you know, tighten the screen that way to keep it in place. Or these 3M circles it comes with with adhesive. I'll tell you what, these things are strong. And then you just use an included suction cup on each side and then that tension you know, just kind of keeps the screen in place. Now one thing I probably would have done, I probably would have put these a little farther forward you know, that way it just kind of keeps the screen from pushing back. But I'm even finding where I have them or off to the side, it's working really well. So this is not set up completely how they would like it to be. They include these sandbags, uh, which you can actually take this and pull it back. All right, so I'm not using those. I don't, I don't find it necessary. You know, if you're not worried about stray balls, you don't have to worry about it. But if you are, then do it. Now up here is interesting because you'll see how it's pulling out and it kind of has a, a wedge catch, if you want to call it that. That actually has a little bracket that connects to your garage door rail. And then over here is where the other bracket, it's kind of like a C-channel bracket connects. And I'll take you guys to the other side and show you the motor and everything and how that works. So really simple setup, honestly. So if you look up here, that actually is a motor that slides into the pole. 
and then it plugs in with a nice long cable. A lot of you guys probably have the new side garage door openers. If you don't and you have a plug, you have tons of cable you can run down. And then I'll show you guys up here what that looks like. So you kind of have, you know, foam pads and then little adjustable rings that the screen actually uh, connects using um, some very strong zip ties. And then use your remote control and you can just wind this thing right up. So let's go ahead and take some shots and we'll show you guys this thing in action going up as well. All right guys, so before I show you how easy it is to use a remote control to get this thing just to retract up with that electric motor, I'll tell you what, we're gonna hit some shots, we're gonna talk about how quiet it is, it's bounce back, and I want, it, I want you to actually notice that this doesn't really move much even though I don't even have everything installed per specifications. So that's an interesting part too, but we're running FSX 2020. It's what I had on this laptop, running a GC3. It's just an easy, simple setup, you know? So let's go ahead and take some shots, see if I can after a long day. <sighs> that wasn't too bad. Now, look where the ball is. Yes, my microphone does a nice job, but I'm in a big echoey garage, and I'm telling you, it's quiet. The ball drops right down. It, notice how it moves like a little bit, but I think it's because the way it's hung and the way that the top is pulling back, it really just doesn't move much. Um, the screen does a good job of absorbing, and you're not looking for this perfect image or anything. Don't get me wrong, it was super easy to set up the BenQ LH820ST the way I did, but you know, you just wanna see your ball fly. You wanna, I mean, if you really wanted to dig into data, you could go over to your laptop if you wanted to or look down on your GC3. The key is, is that you can go out and play virtual golf easily. I mean, it's a great image. It really is. Notice nothing's really moving again. That's why I wanted to take several shots for you guys. And that way you can be able to see, you know, it's quiet. It doesn't, you know, move much. I mean, it's a temporary setup for anyone. I say that because you retract it up and put it out of the way. You can, st the one thing I like about the shop indoor golf four by 10 hitting mat like this is that foam. It's very sturdy and it's lightweight. So when you pack this up, you're just gonna unsnap it, set it against the wall, you know, either drive on your turf if you want to or roll it up, get it out of the way and retract this thing. So we're gonna do that here in just a minute. But let's go ahead and we'll hit one more shot. I'll well, see, going downhill fast. We'll try to redeem ourselves. I'm hitting enough shots to where you guys get to understand that it's not moving. You know, the balls aren't flying all over the place or anything. Um, I always wanna make sure I hit a, enough shots for you guys to do that. All right, let's see if we can actually close the face a little bit this time. There it is. Actually ended up going with a little bit of a draw there after over closing the face a little bit. I'll take it, but I'll tell you what, I, I mean, I think this is a tried and true garage golf simulator setup that anyone can do. And, you know, I, I have to reiterate that this was custom for my garage, which is unique. So make sure you check out, you know, the other setups. But let's show this thing in action. I'm going to take my mats. I'm going to stack them up and put them off to the side and everything. We'll get our remote and we'll watch this thing retract. Well, guys. I have to say I'm a little disappointed in myself. I really should have taken a video of kind of disassembling the mat, taking off, you know, what was necessary to retract the screen because it was so easy. I mean, really all, all I did was is I disconnected the two things on the top that hold, you know, the screen up and then the two ropes on the bottom to the suction cups and then got my GC3 out of the way and everything, and then just kind of folded this in, and we're gonna actually do the retracting for the first time ever. You're gonna see it right here. I grab my remote, I'm hitting the up button. So it actually looks like it goes like almost backwards, which is interesting. I, I kind of thought, I don't know why, but I kind of thought for some reason it would wind up from the back, but Seems to be going well. I mean, it has plenty of room on both sides, which I like. 
So you know that it's not gonna catch on something. I was keeping an eye on that as we went up. Going up. I think the only thing that's gonna be interesting is, is do I let it kinda of hang right there? You can stop it. Yeah, I would just leave it right there. So other than maybe it hanging down like a little bit on one side, if I wanted to lower it down, I do want to demonstrate lowering it down. So I'm going to hit the down button. Let's say it's time to golf. You know, your car's in here, you pull it outside, you're ready to play golf, you grab your remote, you hit down, and it starts retracting. Throw your turf down really quick, grab your mat, turn your computer on, throw a launch monitor down. I mean, really simple stuff. If you wanted to mount a projector from the center, you know, you wanted to do that from your ceiling, you could do that. It'd be really easy. Now I am gonna have to stop this where I, where I want it. So once it's down right there, that's where you hit stop. All I have to do is attach the two top ropes, the bottom, I'm back to playing golf. I have to say guys, I'm pretty impressed. I appreciate you guys watching this video. I appreciate you guys, you know, supporting the channel, using the links and everything that I put down in the descriptions and pinned to the top of the comments. I also appreciate everyone that actually wanted me to find a product like this that's trying to do this in their garage. So here you go, I hope you like it. G-Track retractable motorized golf simulator enclosure for your garage, like I said, might be the most simple garage golf simulator setup we've ever done here in the channel. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always guys, stay tuned. There'll be a lot more coming soon.